peaceful, less feverish days now gone forever. The harness horse served us beyond all other creatures. He brought the doctor who ushered us into the world. He drew the somber vehicle which bore us to our last resting place. On country road or city street, he was the hot rod of his time. The boys who drove were older then. On training tracks and stock farms throughout the land, we strove to increase his stamina and speed. These efforts to quicken the transportation of the country produced better and still better horses. And so at last came Dan Patch, the best, the swiftest, the greatest of them all. This is his story. Kind of a sort of a way with a horse, Davy. Oh, I wouldn't know about that, Chet. It's quite a spell since I've had a hold of one. What's this I'm driving? Oh, he ain't much. Just mane the tail. But your paw's got a good one. You hear him tell it. Home in the barn. Shaw? No, no thanks, Chet. Say, um, what do you do up there in Chicago anyway? I'm a chemist. Don't mean nothing to me. You pay good? Enough to get married, huh? Yeah, I hear that's what you come for. Well, you're getting yourself a fine gal. Some folks think. Seen her yesterday. Didn't see me. Seldom does. Just a mite stuck up, maybe on account of being a school teacher. I guess. Oh, you won't say that when you get to know her better. Doubt if I ever do. Another mouth to feed. Are you still hollow, clear down to your feet when you set them under a table? You know I'll hardly eat a bite the whole time I'm here. Do you know why? I'm used to good cooking now. <laughs> Where's Dad? Where he always is. Out to the barn, fooling with some worthless, broke-down racehorse. I've uh, been expecting you. Well, you're, you're looking good. Uh, you too. New one? Yeah. Four-year-old I traded for. Give a hopple pacer and... Three hundred dollars. Oh, what's her name? Zalika. Can she stand? Well, I'll tell you. I've tried for 40 years to get a good one. And there she stands. Son, she can fly. Face her, Trotter. Face her. I'm sending her over to Ben Lathers on Monday. Yeah. Hey. How would you like to take her over the track after dinner and work her a half? Oh, man, oh, man, I'd love it. That is, if you'd trust her to me. Trust her to you? You're a palmer, ain't you? <sighs> but hold on. You seen Ruthie yet? Not yet. I thought I'd surprise her. Uh, maybe after I work the mare, uh, I could uh, drive on into town. Well, I guess so, yeah. 
But uh, don't let her stand around too long when you uh, get the spark in. <laughs> Chanting in this, my dear. Somehow I always put more of myself into a wedding gown. You know, if I thought I could have a church wedding, I'd be tempted to say yes. Oh, really? To whom? Oh, dear, well, suppose I say someone terribly big and strong who'd come along and Sweep me off my feet. Ouch! Oh, heaven! I'm so sorry. I suppose we keep men out of the conversation. Mm -hmm. I promise. All but one. The man. How soon will he be here? Oh, any day now. He'll let me know. Well, I hope. Teacher, teacher, you're bold in town. You're bold in town. Well, I never. The little imp. Of course it can't be true. Of course not. Miss Treadwell, he's here, she's here! Ain't children dreadful? I suppose that's their idea of a joke. Uh, can I peek? Well, Ruthie, you look mighty nice in that. Your man will like you in it, too, I guess. <laughs> you just got in on number six. So nice of you to let me know, Mr. Moore. I think we'd better stop for today, Miss Rogers. I feel tired. There, Bruno. Right there, what? That's wide open. Getting mighty hungry. That's fair. Let's hear one. Old mixed team is what I drive. Mare and a mule, boat half a life. Wherever I go, whatever I do, mixed teams got me feeling blue. Come on, mule, come on, man. We can't sit in an easy chair. Hear me, Jesus. Hear me, oh, won't eat, got to work, and that's the law. Mixed team, mixed team, don't stride alike, don't pull together, hate each other, delude in the weather, oh, Lord, when I'm getting yoked up. Forever, don't put me in, don't put me in, oh, don't put me in, no mixed team. Where does Ben lay from stable? Down the end of the line and to the right, sir. Thanks. Good to see you. Good to see you, too, Ben. Sissy, look who's here. Sissy Lathrop. Well, the last time I saw you, you were just arms, legs, and freckles. Didn't keep her from being stuck on someone I know. Had such a mash on him, she hated her teacher, because the fellow was kind of soft on the school, Marm. Pop. <laughs> yeah, kids are funny. Ben, I brought the mare over to let her step a half. Zelica, ain't it? Mm-hmm. Dad's sending her to you Monday. Glad to have her. She's a nice built thing. Say, Sissy was just going to give this coal to work. Why don't you work out with her? Sissy? Can she work a horse on a track? Mm-hmm. Wait and see. Oh, well, fine. <laughs>
What do you think of her? She sure got a lot of step. She'll, uh, she'll have to have light knee boots in the front. I'm afraid you're stuck for a special block, mister. She goes awful wide. Mm -hmm. She'll hit a regulation bike on the turns when she comes to her full speed. Man, does she know her business. Worried some about that gal. Ought to finish high school. That's what she'd be doing if her ma'd lived. I can't handle her. Tell me something, Ben. Why do you horsemen always fool with a whip that way when you go to talk seriously? Well, no, I never thought about that. Dogged if we don't. <laughs> Guess fellas' thoughts come easier when they're fooling with a whip. I see. You know, you're, uh, you're right about Sissy, Ben. She should finish school. I'll see you in a minute. So you like Zelica? She's nice. I think she'll make a good race mare. Sissy, why aren't you at school? Pop been complaining? Oh, well, happened to mention it. I think you should go. All right, mister, I will. May I interrupt? Ruth! Oh, no, David, not here. Anywhere. Then everything is all right. All right, what are you talking about? Well, you arrived without a word, then never came near me. I, I drove clear out to the farm. Father told me you'd be here. But, oh, David, I can't understand it. Oh, gosh, I was just trying to surprise you. In this town? Well, I was going to drive in right after I worked the mayor. Oh, I see. After you worked the mayor. Well, well I'll run along. I mustn't come between you and a horse. I love you, old lady. Oh. David, I'm so unbelievably happy. Oh, but darling, couldn't we go outside? Why, girl, this is perfume. Horses, leather, liniment. I could shut my eyes and know I was in a racing stable. <laughs> I'm afraid I prefer fresh air. All right, come along, Miss Prim. <laughs> That girl you were talking to, I should know. Her face was so familiar. Sissy Lathrop. She's helping her father. Oh, of course. I had her in the eighth grade. Poor child. I recognize her in that awful get up. Here you two will be hooked up for good this time next week. That's right. Hop in, honey. How can I? What do I think? Best place in the world. Oh, David, no. Why not? Well, because it's undignified. Oh, listen to the school barn, Ben. Come on, pitch her up here. Sure thing. There you go. Oh, this is so silly. All right, ma'am. Some money, Pop. Sure. How much? You're gonna buy me a new dress. That'll be nice. I'm going back to school. Well, now, maybe that's a good idea. I've seen you two drive in. Next time I go sparking, Daniel, will you loan me that little speed wagon? That's made to order. Ain't a woman this side of 90 would get in that rig with you. Now, that's too bad. I had you in mind a special, Net. You won't be 90 for a couple of years yet, will you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I uh, kind of nudge the biscuits in this direction, David. Good job. Mr. Palmer, would you do me a big favor? Oh, sure, sure. Anything you say, Ruthie. Would you cut a nice big load of those daisies in the field next to the barn and have them for the church Thursday morning? Daisy's church? What, what? Well, to decorate the chancel, David. 
It's the Presbyterian Church, Mr. Palmer. Well, I'm just a hard hand around here, but if you ask me, that's flying kind of high. Nobody's asking you nothing. Oh, now, look, kitten. Couldn't we just go quietly to Squire Saunders and get married? People not... who count, David, aren't married casually by a justice of the peace. Oh, do we count? We will someday, darling. No, oh, that's your show, sweetheart. If that's the way you want it, it's okay with me. <laughs> Thanks. But please stop saying okay. I loathe this modern slang. No. I don't care where you get married. I'll see you get your daisies all right. But, son, are you sure you want to go on fooling with them chemicals? Well, of course I am, Dad. What else would I do? Well, me and my father before me got a good living and a lot of comfort, you might say, out of this farm. And I... Well, I ain't gonna last forever. Matter of fact, he's had a spell or so lately, Doc Abbott. Don't like. Well, nothing serious, is it, Dad? No, no, no. No, just not to start me thinking. Ruthie, we got a nice spare room here. Now, why don't you and Davy go off and take a little trip after you're married, then come back and settle down here? Oh, well, I, I'm sorry, Dad, but, well, we just couldn't do that. Well, well why not? I'll well, tell you why not, Dan Palmer. I didn't take over here when Elizabeth died because you were my brother. I'd done it for the poor little thing she left behind that needed a woman's care. Well, he got it. And more. I didn't scrimp and save to send him through college for him to slop hogs and pitch manure. And don't you forget it. Stick to your victuals. Well, Nettie, it's, it's like this. When a man has raised a boy and, and he's going downhill, he, he naturally... But your goal goes a long way from here, son. Uh, yes, it is, Dad, and I've done something about it. What? I wanted to surprise you. More surprises? Mm -hmm. I've taken a new job. I'm going to work at the Brinkman Laboratories. Looks like Ruth and I are going to live in Indianapolis, just spitting distance from here. Davy. <laughs> that calls for a celebration. Nettie, you get the glasses, and I'll get the jug. Indianapolis? Well, what's wrong with Indianapolis? Well, it's... Not nearly as big as Chicago. Oh, that's big enough for us. Don't underestimate us, David. <laughs> Everything in order, but... Oh. Now, Nellie, not a word. Ruth? Ruth? Where are you? Coming, darling. Oh! Hey, what's going on around here? Nellie gave me a dirty look, fell down the cellar stairs, now you come popping up out of the same place. Well, Nellie was surprised to see you home so early. I, I was just down in the storeroom putting some things away, see, groceries and listen, things. Listen, I've that... taken the afternoon off, and guess where we're going, Tootsie Puss? To the track at Oxford. Zelica's making her first start today. We can catch the one o'clock train, but you'll have to hustle. Well, I can't go, darling. I, I just have to rearrange things in the storeroom. You'd mess around in that storeroom the day that Dad's mayor makes her first start? Well, I guess not. You're coming with me, and right now. No, David. It's just possible that my messing around in the storeroom is more important than watching a horse go around a track. Oh, don't be like that, sweetheart. Gosh. With you, it's drive, drive, drive. You're always busy, always planning something or other. We've got to have some fun once in a while. Dad's expecting us. He'll be hurt. Davy, come with me. But why? We haven't got time. Come on. 
Just for a minute. Yes, but darling, we... Jumping poor cats. Where in the... Where did you get all this? At a tea. Tea? Mrs. Brinkman was there. Oh, wife of the boss. Yes, she's a sweet old thing. I explained that you wanted to do private research and needed equipment, and she said, just leave everything to me, my dear. And here it is, straight from the Brinkman Laboratories. Oh, I can really dig into sulfur with this. How did you happen to know what it was that I needed? Well, I heard you talking to Bill Tate about your sulfur process. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The night he came to supper. A dinner, David, dinner. Well, I telephoned Bill at the laboratory and he sent me a list. Just more messy. Oh, <laughs> my dear, dear, dear. Wonderful what? Oh. <whistles> come on, come on. We've got to get going. No, David. I'm tired. You go if you must. Okay, sweetheart. Oh, I mean, uh, all right, baby. Uh, you lie down, take a little rest. So long. Well, from now on, it's up to you, Ben. Oh, you don't need to worry about her. Will she win? Off by herself, mister. She can pace this track in 12. Luck to you, Ben. Don't need it. She'll do it all. No food. I'll lead her to her first race. Come on, kid. Come on. Here we go. to a regulation bike. Sally. What's the matter? What's wrong? She'll hit if she goes wide. She'll hit the bike on the turns. She's in the lead. There's nothing wrong. She's in the lead. Maybe Ben knows. Look. He's slowing on the turn. Easy, baby. Easy now. Sissy. Sissy, everything's all right.
Man, that's bad. She hit on the first turn. Must have put her foot right through the spokes. I never even knowed she'd hurt herself. She didn't take a lame step till she'd won the heat. Get her back to the stalls. Miserable fool. A grand of man. Stop that song. Stop. Do it again. Do it again. In here, darling. Dad's mare was badly hurt. She'll never race again. Oh, that's too bad. I'm terribly sorry. May I get you something? A glass of milk? A little whiskey? No. No, I think I'll go to bed. Get a good night's sleep. You'll feel better in the morning. David. Mrs. Ormsby, I, I met her at the Brinkman's, is giving a reception on the 14th. I feel sure we'll be asked. Is that good? Why, David, she's one of the most fashionable women in town. Oh. This nice hot coffee. She's done. She's done. Well, you can't do nothing about it, Daniel. Drink your coffee. One heat in her first race, and she's done. Or, or is she? Joe Patchen. <laughs> Joe Patchen. Don't spill your coffee. Who's Joe Patchen? The greatest pacing horse that ever looked through a bridle. He's a stud now over in Illinois. I'll send her over to him. Illinois? What'll it cost? I don't know. Four or five hundred, maybe. Have you gone plum crazy? Listen, woman. She went a mile all but the first sixteenth with a rear tendon about tore off. And one! She's earned a coat that can look at anyone that lives in the eye. Joe Patchen ought to be a proud horse to mate her. But all that money, Daniel. Shut your gab! She goes to Joe Passion if I gotta put a mortgage on the farm. for three long years. How'd you like to do a little farming for a change? Ben Latham's gonna train him. He'll be over to get him any minute now. You squealed like a stuck hog over the money it took to send the mayor to Illinois. Take a good look at him, Nettie. If he ain't worth five times what it cost, I'll eat my... Morning. Morning, Ben. Morning, Dad. Ben, sissy. Morning, Morning Nettie. Morning, Ben. Well, here he is. Well seen worse. We might make nothing out of him. How about it, sis? Like him, gal? Guess she likes him. She want to pace her trot. <laughs> 
face, and you'll never need to put no hopples on him. What's his name? Well, Chet's been calling him Dan around the barn, but the head. Uh, he'd buy Joe Patch and say, what's wrong with Joe Patch? No, oh, too much like the sire. How about a name for him, sis? Don't ask me, Pop. Oh, why not? You've named a hundred. But we're different, just horses. He makes me feel like I'd be stepping out of my class to try and name him. Never seen her like this before. What's the matter with Dan after his owner and Patch for the sire? Dan Patch. Dan Patch. Dan Patch wins the heat and the race. Hey, that sounds good. That's it, Ben. <laughs> Dan Patch. During my... I just can't believe it. The last quarter. 31 seconds. But no Green Bay's ever stepped that fast, Pop. Up till now, they ain't. Daniel, get ready for a shock. You're the first man ever to own a horse that showed a 2-4 clip with three weeks training. 2-4? Ben, are you sure? That's right. 2-4? Two, two why, why, Ben? He's a world beater. Yippee! Palmer, what's wrong? Just a, just a little spell, it'll pass. I can't stand good news, I guess. Come on, Dano. You better lay down. Does Dave know about these spells? No, no, no. I don't want to bother him. He's, he's a big man now. You know, Ben, that, that boy of mine gets a big piece of money for every ton of sulfur dug out of the ground. <laughs> I think he ought to know, Dano. Oh, he couldn't do no good. It ain't nothing anyway, huh? I'll be all right in no time. <laughs> hey, gosh, it's, it's left me. <laughs> Just like that. Well, hey. I feel like a fighting cock. Oh, now, take it easy, Dan. Oh, go on, get out of my way, you old broke down side wheeler. <laughs> Don't you better drive him home, Pop? Kick me out of the rig if I tried it. You know what? We're starting for Indianapolis right now. Do we have to? Yep. Get yourself into a dress. We'll catch the 150. Not the word. Respectful admiration from a humble worshiper describes it best. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. Oh, I'm not. I'm only the instrument that you use to bring us to this. How absurd. You discovered the sulfur process. I only helped in my weak woman's way. You weak? <laughs> Is this it? This is it. Well, come on. You go, Pop. I'll stay in the cab. No, no, you don't. If I can take it, you can. Funny-looking bell. 
bell pull. Never seen one in the middle of the door before. Must be it, nothing else here. Maybe you'd hear me if I holler. Oh, don't holler. Got to the groundhog cage. David! Hold him! Oh, you've ruined everything now. Well, this the David Palmer place? It is. Trades people at the rear. Uh, 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 hold on there. I ain't traded horses for years. I train them now. I want to see Dave. You know Mr. Palmer? Since he was a yearling, where's he at? Your name, please. Ben Lathrop and Sissy. One moment, please. Lemon? Cream? No, thanks. Nice little place you got here, Davy. Where do you eat when it rains? Out under a tree, Ben. Well, Sissy, my dear, you're looking rather more presentable than the last time I saw you. I hope some young man has noticed it. Oh, no, Miss Tread. I mean, Mrs. Palmer. All this girl thinks about is horses. Still? Not really. Fact. Well, my dear, I'm sure it's time you began to consider How some other plans. How about you forgetting that you used to be a school mom, sweetheart? Yes, darling. Well, it sure is good to see you two again. I know you didn't come up here for nothing. Ben, out with it. Well, Davey, we uh, were just passing through town, and um, Sissy thought of dropping in on you. Didn't you, sis? Guess so, Pop. Oh, you old horse trader. Come on, come on. What's on your mind? Horse trader? That's what one of your hired hands called me. This is what's on my mind mostly. Dan Patch went a quarter in 31 seconds this very day with three weeks' work. Holy mackerel! Oh, no. No, it isn't possible. You made a mistake in the timing. I kind of think I can stop a watch when a horse hits the wire. Another thing, if I couldn't judge pace after all these years, I'd quit climbing onto a bike. Davy, that's the fastest I ever rode behind anybody's horse. 31 seconds. Great. Balls of fire. What did Dad say? He was tickled. And uh, that reminds me. I kind of think he'd like to see you one of these days. Well, I'm planning to be up there Friday. Why, we've asked him to come to us for a visit again and again. Yes. Yes, we have. Well, now, they're getting on. Expect they take more comfort right at home. Well, sis, we got to move. Oh, no. Oh, you can't do that. We want you to stay for dinner and uh, spend the night with us. Oh, yes. How nice. I, I think we better be going, Pop. Thanks for the invite, but uh, tomorrow's work day. We got to start grilling horses at 6 o'clock. So long, Dave. Goodbye, Mrs. Palmer. Goodbye. Goodbye, Sissy. Bye, Bye Sissy. See you soon. Why did you give me that look when I asked them to stay? The Nesbitts are dining with us tonight. What of Can you see Ben and Sissy with the Nesbitts? Perhaps not. But, sweetie pie, if I had my choice between Ben Lathrop and George Nesbitt for an evening, it wouldn't be George. You know, dear, sometimes I think the culture you've acquired is only a veneer. Telegram for you, sir. Thank you. From Aunt Nettie. Dad's sick. We'll catch the five o'clock hustle. Darling, I can't go in this. Please don't say hustle. Dad always says hustle, I remember. I'll call you from Oxford.
you feel. I... I... I feel all right, son. Tell... Tell them. Bring... I want to... See... to see that damn patch through the window. Not excited. Chet. Yep, get a hold of Ben right away. Tell him to send that horse over as fast as he can. Hurry, cinch him up. Check it. Chance. I will. Don't worry. There's a lot of the horsemen in me. Well, if there ain't, you're registered under the wrong sire. Say something. Don't just sit there. Don't seem possible. Daniel's gone. I might have known. That's all you've said for a week. I wish you'd quit it. I expect it's brought on the worrying about you and me. What have we got to worry about? Well, maybe it ain't fitting that we should live here alone together. Meaning the tongues will wag? Well, maybe something like that. They might, Chet Williams, if it was anybody but you. As it is? People wouldn't think no more of it than if I kept a shoot on the place. Oh, now, looky here, I ain't fa... Looked high and low for Dad's will, Aunt Nettie. Afraid he didn't leave one. I think I know what he wanted done. So do I. You're his natural son and heir. I'm his son. But he bequeathed me all he wanted me to have with his last breath. One horse. Dan Patch. I'll keep him as sort of a trust. All the rest, the farm and everything else on it, is yours. Well, now, that's real kind of you, Davy, but I've spent a lot of years right here. I've been kind of thinking I'd be grateful for a change. What I'd like to do is move right spang into Oxford, where I could look out any hour of the day and see folks passing. I understand, Aunt Nettie. So I'll tell you what we'll do about it. I'll take the farm off your hands for, well, any price you say. Oh, Davy, would you? Sure, of course. It's all set. 
Well, what's going to happen to me without you? Oh, heaven only knows. Uh, why don't you take him with you? What could he do in town? I ain't going to farm. I'm just going to set. I've been waiting 40 years for the chance. Yes, I, I know you have, Aunt Hattie, but, uh, well, you'll be alone, and uh, couldn't you use a husband? Uh, him? Oh, my glory. Well, I'm just a hired hand around here, but if you ask me, that's the way to figure it out. You men. Poor soul. I expect it's my duty. Chet and Nettie going to marry. That'd make a horse laugh. How do you keep a straight face, Dan? I'm moving into town. I want to build a training track out there, Ben. Some stables, buy some brood mares. How about you taking charge of the whole thing? Just train for me. Well, now, you know, that strikes me as... Well, what do you say, sis? I say we're doing well enough right here, Pop. Mm. I'd like to shut this now. I like that from you. Well, Ben, what about it? Davy, there ain't nobody I'd rather work for than you. But we've trained here for a good many years. I guess she's kind of got used to it. Yeah. Takes to make a change. Heard what she said. What do you say? I hate to disappoint you, Davy. I wouldn't want to refuse you anything. But I've got to say... No. Very well. I'll send for Dan as soon as I find a new trainer. Please, mister, don't take me away from us. Just that I want Dan Patch out there where Dad raised him. Please, mister, no matter who you get, don't trust everything to him. See him yourself each day and watch his coat and watch his appetite and be sure he does. Well, what are you talking about? I'll be lucky if I see this fellow once a month. Won't you and Miss Tread, Mrs. Palmer, be living there some? Ruth? At the farm? Couldn't get her out there with a team of mules. Maybe we could take the child, Pop. Because I won't be there? Oh, mister, I... We don't like owners fooling around our horses. Let's get into her, Ben. Who can say about a gal? When are you going to start building your track? Right away. <laughs> a voodoo, gentlemen. Let it come from you, Voodoo. If you wake up in the morning, kind of scared and full of dread, say, devil, slide back down below. I'm a long, long way from dead. When your bones ache in the evening and you find that good old bed, say, not yet, devil, wait around till I'm plenty good and dead. When the night comes on forever, you can't raise your tired old head. Forget that devil, say, oh, Lord. Come and take me when I'm dead. Can't get you then, can't get you now. Devil hang around, but he don't know how to take you down. In the 
Maybe forty thousand dollars. Oh, a thing like this, David. That's wicked. Oh, man's got to have some fun, darling. <laughs> Pretty expensive fun. Oh, I don't know. How much did your greenhouses and the landscaping cost at Shadow Lawn? Starters in the first heat of the 2.30 pace. Why'd you bring your missus to see Dan Patch make his first start? Oh, my wife thinks that fooling around with speed horses is just a waste of time. <laughs> now that's a notion. Well, here we go, fella. Can he win it, Ben? Well, if he fell down and broke all four legs, maybe he wouldn't. Come on, Dan, let's get out there and jog around Ready with him. for the 2.30 pace! Ben's a little touched about that horse, isn't he? I wonder what you'll call me. I think he's going to be the greatest pacer that ever lived. I call you just plumb crazy. Take back number three. Come on, number seven. Watch your pole horse, number five. Go! Oh, 
on. Just a buggy ride. Right, Snoozer. Your pal's a great guy. We can go to the Grand Circuit with him next year, Pop. Well, now, let's don't get too excited. Nobody'd rather say yes better than me. He might not pull my arms off against them kind of horses. But, Davy, you don't talk about putting a green pacer on the Grand Circuit after one heat in the county pace. Let's see what he does right here in Indiana the rest of the year. <laughs> Dan after his campaign. I'll bring him out and you can see. Well, hello, stranger. Kind of thought you'd forgotten us. Oh, no, it's not that. It's just oh, that, well, I, well, it's kind of hard for me to get away from home. Oh, say, he's quite a horse. What are your plans for him, Ben? Well, with all the money you spent on them brood mares, he ought to be a peppy this time next year. Uh-huh. And then what? Tell you what I've done. My arms need a rest. I've entered this scoundrel on the Grand Circuit from Windsor to Memphis. Oh, good. Those horses will make him step. I doubt it. Well, it's great to be crazy. Wait and see. chance of getting this patch horse. Not a chance. Well, then it's settled. We don't start again, huh? Well, that's all right today. Yeah, that's what we should do. That's today right. at Lexington. But what about from now on? All the rest of the season. Every time they're starting. Are you sure you can't drive, Pop? I don't see how I can. Hello, everybody. Mister, we haven't seen you since Cleveland. Right. Uh, hello, Dave. Why didn't you let us know you were coming? Well, I didn't know myself until this morning. What's the matter with you, Ben? Oh. Pop's got sciatica. He can't drive today. What do we do? Oh, get another driver. I got one. Who? I'm looking at him. You. Me? Oh, I wouldn't think of it. Drive Dan Patch in a race? Ben, it isn't your back, it's your head. Look, all you got is sit there and try and talk him back. And if you won't do it, I'll scratch him. Ain't a driver in the circuit wouldn't like to see him hurt or lamed. Yeah, but, well, I never drove in a race. You're Dan Palmer's son. That's good enough for me. The starting bell, we gotta do something quick. Oh, I'm sorry, Ben, I just couldn't. All right, sissy, get over to the judge's stand and scratch you. Hook him up. Take off your coat, mister. Oh, now, wait, I... Take it off. Well, just a minute. You heard her. The driver of 
Dan Patch is wanted in the judges stand. The driver of Dan Patch is wanted in the judges stand. See me, gentlemen? Yes, Mr. Palmer. You're both the owner and driver of Dan Patch today? I'm afraid so, sir. Well, we're going to lighten your task. You've got a little bit too much horse, it seems. All the other entries in the 210 pace have been scratched. All you've got to do is jog once around the track, and the purse is yours. Oh, I see. A lot of people here today, gentlemen. I'm afraid most of them will be disappointed if I just jog him around. No yes, doubt sir, about it, right. sir. Suppose I drive him a mile against time. Oh, just a thing. Just a thing. Let's see how the horse is. Send him against his sire's record. Against Joe Patchen's record? Well, I, I don't know that. Well, uh, all right. Good luck. The other starters on the 210 pace. Having failed to appear, Dan Patch will go an exhibition mile against time, driven by his owner, Mr. David Palmer. The horse will make an effort to equal the record of his sire, Joe Patchen, two, one, and a quarter. Pacing record. Star pointer, 159 and a quarter. We'll go for that next season. Mr. David Palmer? Right here. Telegram for you, sir. Excuse me. Gotta go right back to Indianapolis. Where's my hat and coat? Time for this yet, mister. Wait a minute. Thanks. Oh. Thanks, Sissy. Well, see you both out at the farm. Bye. So long. Say, there's a pretty good show in town. How about you and me seeing it tonight? Oh, I'm sorry, but Pop don't feel so good. I gotta stay with him. I'm fit's a fiddle. You go right ahead. There you are. Where'll I pick you up? He, um, uh, he's always like that, Bud. He never admits he's sick. He's got an awful back, though. I gotta keep putting hot towels on it till he gets to sleep. 
Well, I'll keep trying. Sissy, I could be awful crazy about you if you give me a chance. Well, that's nice, Bud. That's real nice. But I gotta look after Pop right now. Why'd you give that young fella the cold shoulder? Take care of your back, Pa. You know dang well I never let you fuss around me. Well, I don't feel so good myself. I guess that mild down went sort of... I feel kind of let down. Yeah. You're let down, all right. And I'll tell you why. Because Davy's gone. It's been going on since before you put on long skirts. Thought it was funny when you was a kid. I don't now. What are we gonna do? I'll tell you what we'll do. Bud lives in Muncie. We'll give him an invite to the farm when we get home. How's that? And you be real nice to him. You're here. I'll try, Pop. Oh, darling, thank heaven you're here. Guess what Dan Patch did oh, David, to... David, I can't be interested in a thing like that just now. Didn't you get my telegram? Oh, yes, yes, I did. What's up? United States Sulphur has canceled your contract. Representative called this afternoon. They're adopting a new process that eliminates yours. That is a jolt, isn't it? A jolt? It's a disaster. We have only the income from our investments. Well, at least we won't starve. You can always... Don't be ridiculous. I've been over our accounts. Your farm cost us almost 20000 last year. That much. That much. It's all there. You'll have to sell it. Hand the horses at once. Sell it. Sell the horses. But I can't. What about Dan and... What about Ben and Sissy? David Palmer, have you lost your mind? Bud Ransom? Hello. Oh, please meet you. Well, now, this is quite a contraption. Yeah, the worst of it is that someday these things are going to put the driving horse out of business. Oh, nobody in their right mind would travel in a stinking thing like this. Oh, thanks. I ain't speaking about city fellas like you. They don't know any better. Well, Ben, I was born right in this house. Maybe so, but you've changed plenty. Sissy, do you suppose you could dig up a bite to eat for a city slicker? Well, during my ornery time, I thought we was here for keeps. What about Dan Patch? You gonna let him go with the rest? No, no, I'm gonna try and keep him. Looks like we got to start hunting up some horses to train. You ain't got a thing to worry about, Ben. You got a home with us for life. <laughs> ain't he, sissy? You keep crowding, bud, and the starters have to send you right to the bar. <laughs> I heard my number called that time. Pop, if you want to get bud the 10 o'clock train, you better start. I kind of thought we might talk him into spending the night. I don't think we have room now that Mister's here. Well... You can come over next week, bud. I expect we'll be here till then. Sis, take a look at the Stacy mare after a while. You know something? I don't like that fellow, bud. 
Oh, mister, you don't even know him. He's a good young race driver. Well, couldn't drive a mule for me. You're hurting my hand, mister. Why do we have to watch this mayor? It's the boy's night off. Oh. Well, mister, do you have to do it? Yes, sissy, I do. I can't stand the expense any longer. But it doesn't have to be an expense. If you come here and live and put your mind to it, you can make it pay. You've forgotten one thing. My wife, she hates the country. Oh, well, mister, I haven't forgotten. from the back porch and another lantern. Hurry. <laughs> Get another blanket ready. How long do we keep this up? I don't know. Maybe another half hour. It's cooling off. In a minute. We saved her, mister. You mean you did. Will she have her fall now? I hope so. <laughs> Like Dan and Snows. Wonder what God will do this time, Dad. I'll go see.
tits out. You go straight in the house and go to bed. Hold on. It's not the way to the house. You take a look at the mare. Short back. Good legs. You go to sleep. Mr. We saved him and his mammy in the barn. sell this place and keep the farm. Don't try to talk, dear. You must lie down. You... Uh, in your room. I'm all right. Oh, what was it, dear? The automobile? Well, never mind. I'll call Dr. Dalton and he'll Nothing's get... the matter with me. I, I helped to put out a fire at the farm. We're going to move out there. I think I can make it pay. My dear David, you are out of your mind. On the contrary. I never felt more sane. David, not that chair. You're covered with soot. Oh, David! My beautiful satin chair. How could you? Oh, I'm sorry, Ruth. I'm tired, I guess. Well, if you get out of those filthy clothes and into a good hot bath, it, it may rest you. I hope. No. I want this settled first. I'm selling Shadow Lawn, and we're moving to Oxford. And you call that sane? I call it weak. It'll take a real effort to maintain our position here now. It's easier to slink back to what you came from. I'm not quitting, Ruth. I'm just going to where I want to be. Where I've come to feel I belong. I don't feel at home here. I never have, really. I think that all of this is worth an honest effort. Oh, you don't. Slopping hogs and pitching manure, as your Aunt Nettie used to say, is more your style, I suppose. Maybe. But it's a stock farm now. I'm going to raise horses. I don't care what it is. You'll not take me into any such life as that. Do you realize what you've just said? Perfectly. If 
You persist in this unutterable folly. You and I have reached the end. And for what, David? For what? Mixed tea, mixed tea. Don't stride alike. Don't pull together. Hate each other. Delude in the weather. Oh, Lord, when I'm getting yoked up forever. Don't put me in. Don't. I've been listening. Ruth, you're a wonderful woman. Level-headed, intelligent, but, well, this is your way. Shadow Lawn, you've made it, and you may keep it. And everything else we've got except the farm. That's my way. I'm going back there right now. Oh, mister. I didn't think you were ever coming back. I thought... Do you suppose Dan knows it's his son? this just before I left Indianapolis. Sixty thousand dollars. Goodness, that's a lot of money. Yes, yes it is. But you couldn't sell him. I think Dad would want me to. Want you to sell Dan Patch? Tell him, mister, I'll hate you as long as I live. Sissy, sissy, listen to me. You don't understand. Look, Dan doesn't need us anymore. He's famous. But if we sell him, we can hold on to all this. Give that little fellow, all these falls, a chance to show what they can do. You say we? Yes, we. You'll stay here always, I hope. Mister, <laughs> I love you so. Please don't do this to me. We can't. We must. Oh, yes, we can. Sit down, Sissy. Sissy, I want... Sissy, I've got something important to tell you. Ruth and I have separated. We're through. She keeps Shadow Law. I'll never go back there again. <laughs> Must we sell him? Yes, dear. Mr. Savage is a rich man. He can do something for Dan that we never could do. Show him to the whole world. The whole world? All right, mister. I mean, darling. And so, for the next four years, Dan patched toward the country in a private car become the idol of our nation. 
His appearance at a state fair was called Dan Patch Day, more eagerly awaited by most of us than Christmas. All he did on such a day was try to break his own world's record. Since no pacer could approach his dazzling speed, running horses went with him to make him think he had competition. But what did that matter? We came in multitudes just to see him in action. The money paid for the privilege ran into millions. we are lucky enough to see him or not, old and young alike became familiar with his magic name through the many, many things that bore it. of articles in daily use were named after Dan. A mail order catalog looked like a racing form. Fast talking gentlemen got fancy prices for old horseshoes supposed to have come from a hoof of the great Dan Patch. Had he worn a tent of them, Dan would have been a centipede. And so came a day when Dan Patch was to race for the last time against the slender hand of the stopwatch. More tireless, more difficult to beat than any horse. Among those who came from all over the country to this great event was a small group who knew him best of all. Mommy, she'd like to show you her dog. Yeah. Gentlemen, we welcome back to his home, the pride of Minnesota, the one and only... It was foaled and raised in Indiana! Whoa! Gentlemen is right, but today, here in our state, which now is his home, Dan Patch, will go a mile against time. And, good people, he will be retired after today. The great damn patch will never be seen again on any track. Oh, those are runners with him. Got to have prompters. Only thing can stay with him is a runner. Go! Business. That's the greatest horse that ever lived. Somebody's owed me that a long time. 